This is Ellie coming to you from Australia, also known as The Future. Hello to everyone who's seen me for the first time and hello and welcome back to all of my wonderful subscribers. So um, let's see, Joel Greenberg, uh, Matt Gates's bestie, has been sentenced to 11 years and that included a plea bargain. Isn't that interesting? This is for some kind of tax evasion or something and also um, transporting minors across state lines for the purposes of um, of using them for sexual purposes. And he claims that he has a co-conspirator by the name of Matt Gates for that. But we'll just see. I don't know what's going to happen there, but 11 years. And that was with his plea deal. Um, the special master who Raymond Dreary Deary, sorry, not Dreary, Deary, I think his last name was, Raymond Deary, who was appointed by Eileen Cannon, that wacky uh, Trump judge. Um, he has been shut down, so the special master has been shut down. That now, by the 11th Circuit of Appeals, that means that now Eileen Cannon's role in the Mar-a-Lago um, documents investigation has also been shut down. And the Department of Justice is just carrying on with its investigation of those documents and associated evidence. So there you go. Uh, Congress has a copy of um, Donald's tax returns for the past seven years. Uh, no, for the past six years, which I believe has been a battle they've been fighting for seven years. So Donald lost on that front as well. And um, everything is looking pretty positive. We also have closing arguments in the uh, criminal tax fraud case in New York against the Trump organization. This is the one where Alan Weisselberg is sort of the big witness and he has been falling on his sword and saying that yes I was very very greedy and it had nothing to do with uh, Donald and the kids and the um, organization, the Trump organization as defendant is saying yes you know Alan Weisselberg was very greedy and Donald didn't know anything about it. Uh, anything about his greed and theft and things like that and um, the prosecution in its closing arguments has been saying no actually Donald um, and the family knew everything that was going on in the Trump organization and they are just as guilty so that should go to verdict very soon and it looks as though Trump org is going to be shut down I would say a bit like um, when Donald's charitable foundation <laughs> uncharitable foundation was also shut down the one where he was collecting money for charitable purposes and then using it to buy pictures of himself to put up in Trump Tower and Mar-a-Lago and things like that, to put up in his golf courses. Anyway, so things are not going great. There are a number of different um, investigations that can lead to indictment. And so I have had people begin to ask me, when is this indictment likely to take place? Let's do a full reading and see if we can get a clue as to whether there will be an indictment by around about Easter of next year. So March, April of next year, sometime in the first quarter. I mean, it may not be, but you know what? Let's take a look at the likelihood or whether or not it appears to be close at that time. I can't give you exact dates because I'm just not made that way in terms of being able to read exact dates. But I think we're getting to the point where the cards have been adamant that there will be an indictment. It's pending. And now let's see if we can get a little closer. We'll just call this one of those um, indictment watch videos. So I've been doing lots of shuffling. We are looking at whether or not we can pinpoint a bit of a time scale. I'll be asking the cards in a full reading to talk about the prospect of there being an indictment of Donald by around the end of the first quarter of 2023. So we have the signifier. Hmm. And the challenge card. Conscious thoughts. Subconscious thoughts. 
the past and the short term. Very interesting challenge. Okay, so the signifier is the fall and it's challenged by the ten of wands in reverse. Um, the fall is all about jumping into, uh, jumping ahead, uh, having faith in the universe, believing that um, you will be protected, you will be safe, and just sort of moving forward with abandon and, um, and trusting that the universe will catch you. There's an element of enthusiasm, sort of innocence, uh, not innocence as in, you know, um, childlike innocence, but feeling pretty positive about things. Okay. The challenge here is the 10 of um, wands in reverse. And this is about um, letting go of a dream and facing a tough reality. Now it's the challenge. And in order to sort of understand how it sits as the challenge card, let's have a look at it when it's upright. When the 10 of wands is upright, it's about um, stress, tough times, burden and uh, responsibility. And if this was the challenge, then it would basically be, you know, you think things are easy and that the universe is there to catch you. Um, but it's actually going to be a lot harder than you think. And this is sort of to help people who are learning tarot. If it's immediately in the first instance, really difficult to understand how the uh, how a card can be interpreted given its position, look at it from every angle because it kind of will help you to see how its relationship might be um, identified in the reading. Because the card is in reverse uh, and its, its definition has changed to sort of going beyond there being uh, tough times, going beyond there being a real burden to the point where it's like, um, oh, do you know what? This is getting too much. I've got to let go. This is my dream, but I've just got to let go of it and face the fact that things are going to be um, unlike what I had been striving for. It kind of looks in the first instance as though, you know, this letting go of a dream is also about wasted labor. It's about having put a whole bunch of work into, into indicting Donald and it having been wasted. Don't think too hard when it comes to the challenge card as being an obstacle card. Um, think of it as um, something you've always been, you've always been challenged by. That will probably help because it helps you to see the nuanced reading here. This fool, um, fool card, he's not a fool, he's really a fool when he's in reverse. But this, this fool, the fool card is about having a very fresh, fresh perspective and, um, and jumping into the unknown and kind of taking a risk. Okay. Taking a risk when in the past here and throughout your time of being present, there's been a wasted labor and an inability to get um, that indictment. Okay. This is about the fresh perspective. This is about jumping forward. This is about actually the fact that the baseline is saying that the indictment will take place despite the fact that Donald has this um, legacy of always finding a way to foil this, um, this pursuit of justice. There's always a challenge there against being able to hold him accountable. And in, in that context, the question is, is it going to happen in the next quarter or so? So this is not a definitive baseline. This is sort of redefining the question so that the cards are demonstrating that they understand what the complexities of the question are. So let's keep going. I hope that was helpful. It's not about the fact that it's not going to happen because it's wasted labor. It's about the challenge is there that previously, historically, it's always been a waste of time to try and pursue him. So this whole faith in the universe 
and um, taking a risk element that belongs to the full is really significant because it demonstrates a brand new perspective, kind of a brand new courage. Okay, because this fool is kind of courageous because he just jumps into the unknown and assumes that there's going to be a parachute there to catch him. Okay, so I think that probably was a bit more helpful. So on the conscious level, we've got the six of pentacles in reverse. This is about fraud, greed, and fraud is an element of corruption. Fraud, greed, there can be uh, money disputes, unpaid debts. Um, you know, fraud is about financial fraud, but it can also be about scamming, it can be about stealing, it can be about all sorts of things that are fraudulent. And there's an element of corruption in this card. There's also jealousy in this card at all, but I'm not sure if it's relevant at the moment. Um, on the subconscious, we've got the Four of Swords. And this is about um, self-neglect, insomnia, um, strange dreams, and there's an element of loneliness in this card as well. What these two cards represent is the smell of blood in the water. And I think that's a really good way to describe this. We have a man who is on a losing streak right now. He is being isolated from his tribe. You know, the Republicans are not supporting him in the same way they can smell blood in the water. And they're starting slowly to peel off from the Trump train. He's, um, he's being haunted by the fact that he's losing a lot of cases. Even the Supreme Court is not going in his favor. Um, he seems to be reaching into the bottom of the barrel now when it comes to the legal representation, or at least the way that they appear to be representing him in court, um, sort of making truth social type arguments in court rather than than providing legal precedent to to justify the filings and things it's very um he's sort of run out of he's run out of these strong elements of support and now he's just grasping at straws so the self-neglect is about having a a lower tier of support around him the uh, insomnia is probably about what he's feeling the strange dreams can be about the the clutching at straws and the desperate kind of visions of maybe we could do this and maybe we could do that all kinds of sort of desperate ideas of how to save yourself and the there's an element of sort of isolation in this card as well which is about um, people dropping off the Trump chain and not wanting to support him anymore but the fact remains regardless of whether or not he's weakening and the blood is in the water for everyone to see or smell there's still criminality there and um, there is still still substance there that needs to be pursued so let's keep going in the past we've got the lovers in reverse this is about um, a nasty breakup it can be about untrue love it can be about stalking um, it can be about a bad union and um, I think that a lot of what this card represents in the past is about reinforcing the elements of fraud because the uh, fraud but also nastiness so the revenge tactics the the fear that people had of Donald as well he would stalk you if he wasn't happy with the way that he was being presented by you or um, if you were if you tried to investigate him in any way he would turn the tables by turning you into some kind of um, prey to be stalked and um, I think that that is where he got his strength by sort of um, punching back harder and that's what appears here in this card in the short term we've got the ace of cups now this is a very very positive card this is the ultimate when it comes to um, a sense of friendship love compassion um, sense of self and things like that I think this represents the degree of confidence that those who are taking a fresh perspective and being courageous about pursuing the man while he is sort of in a vulnerable state and despite the nastiness that um, that he used as, as weaponry keeping in mind that he is um, there's criminality there uh, multi-pronged kind of criminality there in order for them to to find something they're feeling confident and I think that's what this is here and there's also numerous um, 
It's coming from numerous places. You've got lots of state investigations. I think the Manhattan DA, Alvin Bragg, has picked up the case again. Um, you've got Letitia James. You've got um, Fanny Willis. You have um, Jack Smith. And then you have the Department of Justice um, looking at um, the wider Department of Justice with its various prosecutors are looking at other issues. You've got the E.G. and Carol. You've got so many things going on. Um, at any given time, he's got 20 to 30 different cases um, being pursued against him, most of which have criminal elements to it or fraud elements to it. There are also um, civil litigation cases against him as well. There's just everything is sort of zoning in. And he's also finding it harder and harder to get people to back him financially. So there's an element here of confidence, I think, that appears here. So let's keep going. This is a very, very challenging reading, by the way, as you can probably tell. So the way they see themselves, the way others see them or the environment in which they sit, hopes and fears. Mm. And then the final outcome. So the way they see themselves, and these are those who are attempting to get to indictment within a period of time, which is within the next quarter or so. So by around about April of next year is temperance. This is about balance, uh, balance chemistry and getting things right. So this is about steady, steady progression forward. Let's not rush it. Let's not rush it. There's no need to indict today or tomorrow or the next day if another day will make all the difference. This is about not letting go. It's about continuing on and maintaining your calm until the moment is right. So getting your balance and doing things right. Okay. The way they're viewed by others or the environment in which they sit is the Knight of Pentacles. Now this is kind of a risk card because we have here all of these um, confident people who are working and the walls are closing in because they're collectively working on getting Donald. And they can be represented as the loyal knight here. But the risk is that each of them has their own pentacle that could distract them. So, for example, we know that Alvin Bragg isn't the bravest when it comes to prosecuting on um, what may not be ironclad evidence. He wants it to be a stronger case before he moves forward. There are those who have said that they think he's corrupt. I don't think he's corrupt. I think he's really risk averse. Well, this risk aversion can appear in this card because this Knight of Pentacles is a slow moving, so a slow moving uh, Knight that is loyal but it, it wants there to be balance and calm and chemistry and wants to get, you know, dot all his I's and cross all these T's and he wants to get it right. But he, he might also be a bit skittish because if that prospect for his own prosperity, which for example means um, there's a risk to him, if he was to go further, he might step back. So this would demonstrate that this is a very, very risky environment and Donald often gets away with it. Now that's the reason why making him vulnerable, taking account of how corrupt and how vicious he is and how he has a way of turning the tables, um, working almost together to apply that vice of that real pressure um, nonstop and having a bit of faith in the universe despite a history of kind of wasted labor in trying to pin him down on anything is really, really important. Steady, she goes, and keep in mind the risks around you. Okay. Hopes and fears is the hermit in reverse. And this is about um, paranoia. It's about isolation. And I think this is a hope card. You see here we've got, um, there's more meaning now when it comes to the lovers in reverse in this context. This isolated male energy that appears here in the hermit in reverse has a fear of being alone and they're very paranoid and self-pitying. This lover in reverse has an untrue love with people around him who can actually um, 
act as predators on his behalf. So, you know, you've got uh, people like Kerry Lake. Now, Kerry Lake, he, she doesn't care about Donald. She doesn't think that he's much of a hero. He is a stepping stone for her ambitions. And so she's decided, you know what, um, in order for me to achieve whatever it is I need to achieve, I need to suck up to the sky for a little while until I no longer need him. Well, she would fit in this category of the untrue lovers that is a working uh, with Donald. This is a hope card to be able to eliminate as many of those as possible to make him even more isolated so that the blood thickens in the water, make him very, very vulnerable. And that's what this is here. Vulnerable to the point of real paranoia. Gosh, they're so careful. They are being so careful with him. It's painful, really painful. There's a final outcome. We've got um, the Ten of Swords. And the Ten of Swords is about um, the ending of a cycle, the beginning of a new cycle. It can be about death and it can be about defeat. This is a little bit cryptic, so I'm going to put down some clarifiers for this. The end of a cycle can be the end of Donald's reign. It can be the end of the corruption. It can be the end of his being able to turn the tables by using his um, sort of dirty crew of, um, of untrue lovers. To, to stalk on his behalf. Everything from, you know, the, this is the propagandists, these are the people who threaten others and, um, and implement um, his policy directives or the actions that he wants to take in order to intimidate other people. It can be putting an end to all of the things that make him strong, all of the things that make him impervious. But it can also be the end of any likelihood of success and it could ultimately be that the pentacle was too much to bear and uh, everyone has kind of gone off for their own well-being and dropped the ball or it can be about um, it's just too tough and it's another example of wasted labor and that's where the defeat comes from I do suspect that it's not going to be a defeat but I want to make sure that I'm very clear on what this card is so let's have a look here. Let's put down three more cards just from the same shuffle. That's the previous reading, and I'm just going to keep going. So we've got Judgment in Reverse. We've got the Page of Wands. Ooh. And we have the Wheel of Fortune in Reverse. Okay. So I think what the reading is saying is that it's probably not going to be I don't know, the likelihood of it being that fast would turn into something that has a greater possibility of bad luck. We've got here being overly critical, over judgmental, or being very heavily, very um, closely or um, overly judged or critically judged. We also have the Page of Wands, which is about being a free agent, having no ties, having the world's potential. Uh, at your feet and also being an explorer of some kind. Um, you can see this fellow is looking at his wand and the and the shoots of green which kind of are promise of of something new that he could embark on. He's kind of looking to see um, you know I could be anywhere where, where would I like to be? My inspiration is here in this these little shoots. And then um, the Wheel of Fortune in reverse is about luck and destiny. But when the demon is on top and has a dominant uh, position in the card, there's a greater possibility of bad luck. I think that what the reading is saying, because of all of the other cards, you know, the slow moving night, the history of, you know, being very slow and being very careful not to fall for the things that glimmer in your view that might distract you. Um, this history of wasted labor because it, you know, uh, doesn't always go well. The need to get Donald into a very vulnerable position, slow and steady, wins the race here. Maintaining positivity, continuing to have faith, watching out for the dangers that he represents, of course, keeping him vulnerable and never letting your eye off the fact that he's the criminal. So it really, this reading has been all about reminding us that slow and steady is what's going to do it. We must not fall for the hype, 
that happens on the liberal side, which is, why don't they get him? Come on, they need to get him. He should have been indicted a year ago, six years ago, whatever it was. If we're too keen to jump into this criticism, this very, very harsh judgment, it'll be flawed. We have the whole world in front of us and um, m a lot of opportunity here to, to get it right. And the important thing is to actually get it right, which is right here. It's about getting it right. It's not about making it happen and then it ends up being lost on appeal. It's about getting it right and once the cell door is closed, it's closed. That's it's done. And rushing that and getting too excited changes the destiny to one that is not quite as lucky. What we want is we want to get to a point where this kind of, actually probably even more like this, this kind of clarification is what we're looking for. We're looking for uh, lots of opportunities here for us to be able to do something. It's our calling to make it happen and luck is on our side. That's a little bit different, but the cards are not ready for that yet. The cards are saying that um, it may not be quite so fast. Let's not be in such a hurry. We've waited this long. A little bit longer won't hurt. It could be June of next year. It could be something like that, but a little bit longer will help to seal the deal in a more permanent way. Excruciating. <laughs> This was one of those examples where I really wanted to see something different and I had to really hold it back. I really wanted to see something that was just going to be bells and whistles and everything's going to be groovy and they're going to, you know, shut the door on him tomorrow. But I'm afraid that's not what the cards are saying. The cards are saying if we move too fast, if we move too fast and don't get it 100% right, there is a greater possibility of defeat because luck will not be as much on our side because we have been too hasty to judge too hasty basically and too quick to judge there's a lot of time a lot of opportunity and a lot of possibility it's about getting that balance balance right and keeping in mind when you get it wrong when you get it wrong you waste your time so it's about not wasting your time oh such a difficult reading but you know what? If that's what the cards say, then that's what they say. Thank you so much for watching. I love knowing you're here and I'll see you in my dreams. Bye.